iOS 16 has been out for a few weeks now. We've lived with it and found the settings that drain the most battery life. We're gonna talk about the number one setting that can destroy your iPhone's battery life and a new iOS 16 feature that'll change the way you charge your iPhone. But first, we're going to go to the battery section of settings. Let's open up the settings app, scroll down and tap battery and turn on the switch next to battery percentage. In iOS 16, iPhones with Face ID have this new battery percentage indicator. And Apple rolled it out, kind of. If you have an iPhone with Face ID, but you don't see this switch, be patient. At launch, Apple only enabled it for some iPhones. Both iOS 16.1, they corrected that oversight, added it to all Face ID iPhones. Also with 16.1, the battery percentage icon actually corresponds to how much battery life your iPhone has left before it was just a full battery all the time, didn't make a ton of sense. We'll come back to this section of settings in just a little bit, but first let's head to display and brightness. There are two classic iPhone battery tips in here. Let's tap back to settings, upper left hand corner of the screen, scroll up, tap display and brightness and turn on dark mode. Dark mode not only looks cool, but ever since the iPhone 10 launched with the OLED display, AKA the Super Retina HD display, it also saves battery life. Next, scroll down and take a look at auto lock, make sure this is set to anything but never. If it's set to never, your iPhone display just won't lock unless you do it manually. And I forget to do that all the time. Now, some of you sharp-eyed viewers probably saying to yourself, hey, your auto lock is set to never. What's up with that? Well, we do it for our screen recordings. That's for you. If you have an iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max, you'll see a switch here for always on display. It's a nifty new feature, one that Nokia introduced in 2008, but we won't talk about that. And it's a battery drainer. The always on display is brighter than if your iPhone was just locked. So it's putting out power all the time. And I don't think the always on display is very impressive. Me neither. What I'd like to see Apple do was build in a feature where you could turn off the background image for always on display. Why do I want to be draining my battery with this additional power for a background image that I'm never looking at anyway? It's like in between always on display and it's a regular iPhone wallpaper almost. It's like they took a middle approach to it. I totally agree. Let's turn off always on display. There are some more display settings we need to talk about, but they live in a different section of the settings app. Let's tap back to settings, upper left hand corner of the screen, tap accessibility, then tap display and text size and scroll all the way down. First, let's talk about reduce white point. That setting reduces the intensity of bright colors on your iPhone. I like to think of this as recalibrating the brightness slider. You can still adjust the brightness of your phone. Every setting is just a little bit dimmer than before. And it's especially important for you iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max owners with your 2000 nit brightness display. This is an important feature. It's also handy when you're doom scrolling in bed at 3 a.m. Tap the switch next to reduce white point to turn it on. You can drag the slider to the right to make the display darker or to the left to make the display lighter. I like it right about 75%. I'm a 50% guy. I like to view my slider as half full. We're going to turn off reduce white point just for this video. One below that is auto brightness. Apple recommends leaving auto brightness on to save battery life. People run into trouble when they max out the brightness of their iPhone's display and just leave it there all day. That drains battery very fast. We have this off because we're recording this video, but you should turn it on. And there are two other battery tips in this section of the settings app. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen, tap on motion and turn on the switch next to reduce motion. Just to be clear, this is one of those battery tips that might save you a little bit of battery, but isn't gonna make that big of a difference. I like to leave the switch off because I like the motion. Yeah, so if I you know close out of the settings app here, you can see it's different. It's a bit jarring at first, you will get used to it, or you can just turn it off. Let's go back into settings. If you have an iPhone 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max, 14 Pro or 14 Pro Max, you'll see limit frame rate. This reduces the refresh rates from 120 Hertz to 60 Hertz. Again, another one of those settings you probably don't want to turn off because once you go 120 Hertz, you can't go back. Let's talk about an extremely important new iOS 16 setting that could save you battery life. Before we get there, I'm just gonna turn off reduce motion and then go back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap general, then tap software update, and tap automatic updates. Make sure the switch next to security responses and system files is on. When this is on, your iPhone will automatically install rapid security responses and system files. Why is this a battery tip? Well, because when your iPhone has a software vulnerability, it's more likely to get hacked and hacked iPhones drain battery really fast. So is it a stretch? Maybe a little bit, but it's a really important setting to leave on anyway. Definitely make sure the switch is on. There's another battery tip here in the general section of settings. Before we talk about that, we need to talk about our most controversial battery tip. Hear us out, all you. Closing your apps actually drains more battery people. When you close an app, it's supposed to go into a system suspended state after a few seconds, and then it's not supposed to drain your battery. The number one reason you should close your apps, not all the time, but maybe once a day, is that sometimes 
they don't work properly. They crash in the background of your iPhone. They keep running and running and running like the Energizer Bunny, draining battery life. They never showed the Energizer Bunny running out of battery, though. Deceptive marketing. Which leads us into our next tip, background app refresh. Tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, back to the main page of general, and tap on background app refresh. Background app refresh lets apps periodically wake up from their suspended state and check for new content. It's rather vague. Apple also says if you quit an app from the app switcher, it might not be able to run or check for new content before you open it again. Closing out your apps shuts down background app refresh for those apps, which is a battery saver. There's the proof. Go through your list of apps, see which ones you want to be able to download new content in the background of your iPhone. Most of the time, the answer is going to be no. If the answer is no, turn off the switch next to that app. But we're not done with background app refresh yet. Scroll to the top of the screen and tap on background app refresh. I really recommend choosing Wi-Fi. Unless you have the best cellular data connection in the world, your iPhone's going to use more power to connect to those cellular data networks than it will to Wi-Fi in your home, which is probably a better connection anyway. And I just want to say that turning off background app refresh doesn't fundamentally change anything about how you use your apps. For instance, if you open the ESPN app to check the scores, if background app refresh is off, it's then going to spend an extra second downloading the new content. That's the difference. Let's head back to the battery section of the settings app. After all, this is a video about the battery. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, back again, back to the main page of settings, scroll down and tap battery, and then tap battery health and charging. We need to talk about optimized battery charging. If you watched our iOS 15 video, you'll see that our first battery tip was actually to turn this on. We were wrong. No Stracopa. For optimized battery charging to work, you need to have three settings on, two of which we recommend turning off. We think in the long run, it's better to turn those settings off for battery life. We'll tell you about those in just a minute. But is there a way to optimize your battery charging? I use an Apple USB-C to lightning cable and a USB-C charger. There is a lot of intelligent technology built into the Apple chargers that you won't find with third-party chargers, especially fast chargers that cram too much power into the iPhone too fast. That's what's bad for lithium-ion batteries. We're talking about science here, not a setting. And if your iPhone is running iOS 16.1 or newer, you'll see this new clean energy charging switch, which Apple says will try to reduce your carbon footprint by selectively charging when lower carbon emission electricity is available. How will Apple know when that is? Well, we don't know because the Learn More article doesn't exist. We're going to leave this setting on for now, but we reserve the right to change our mind and to keep up to date with all of our great iOS 16 tips, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell. You won't miss a single video. Yeah. And subscribing also reduces your carbon footprint. I don't think it does. From your carbon footprint to your digital fingerprint. I wrote that segue. Let's head to the privacy section of settings. Let's tap back to the main page of settings. One below battery is privacy and security. Scroll down and tap on analytics and improvements. When these are on, your iPhone collects data about you and how you use your iPhone. Turning these switches off will save you battery life. Tap that switch at the top of the screen to turn it off. We really recommend just turning off everything in iPhone analytics. Next, tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, scroll all the way up and tap on location services and then tap on share my location at the top of the screen. Let's start there. For those of you that have family sharing set up like I do, you will see a list of all of your family members here. And I didn't realize that I had shared my location with one family member all the time. So that's gonna be draining my battery all the time. If you see someone who doesn't need your location all the time, tap on their name and tap stop sharing my location. You can always send your location to them in the messages app. Next up, we're gonna tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen and look at this list of apps. These are your apps and how often they can access your location. Really look out for the word always. Always means that an app can always access your location even when you're not using it. So if we scroll down and I've got one always here, it is Seth Q. Let's tap on that. Does my bank need access to my location all the time? Probably not. No, it does not. While using the app or ask the next time or when I share, Usually pretty good choices for you. Also look at this precise location switch. Unless it's a Maps app, an app really doesn't need your precise location. That's gonna use more battery life. Tap the switch, turn off precise location. Next, we're gonna talk about some system services. Tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen below your list of apps is system services. Tap on that. And before we tell you what to turn off, we wanna talk about this new iOS 16.1 system service. That's Carbon Analytics. We think it's related to clean energy charging but we don't know for sure and we reserve the right to change our minds on this one, but we'll leave it on for now. You should also leave on compass calibration if you wanna know what direction you're going in a maps app. So it gives you a little arrow. If you're not using the arrow, you can go ahead and turn that off. Emergency calls and SOS, find my iPhone, 
motion calibration and distance and share my location if that's a feature you use. Let's talk about system customization real quick. This is one of those settings that you need to have optimized battery charging on for. We recommend turning off this switch and the next setting we're gonna talk about, which is significant locations. Let's tap on that, use face ID to get in. If this has been on for a while, you'll see a really long list of places you've been frequently. We recommend turning this switch off, saves some battery life, get that creepiness off your iPhone. Next, we're going to tap back upper left hand corner of the screen. These product improvement switches, go ahead and turn these off. iPhone analytics, we kind of already turned those off, I thought, but apparently not. Riding in traffic, improve maps, turn it off. Apple can improve their own maps or maps. Already <laughs> they can suck. try. Just, just yeah. install Google Maps on your iPhone. Now let's talk about a setting that every 5G iPhone owner needs to change. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen. We're going back to the main page of the settings app. Scroll up and tap cellular, cellular data options, and then tap voice and data. When your iPhone connects to a cell tower, it uses the battery. The worse the signal, the more battery it uses. So unless you have the most amazing 5G connection in the world, definitely don't turn on 5G on. 5G auto is fine if you have good 5G, but if you're like me and your 5G is spotty, just choose LTE. I mean, I don't have any 5G where I live. You probably won't notice a difference just by choosing LTE, and you won't notice a difference with this next iPhone battery tip. Tap back to the main page of settings, scroll down and tap mail, then tap accounts, then tap fetch new data. When push is on, your iPhone maintains a connection to your email server so that as soon as an email arrives, it gets pushed to your iPhone. But with Fetch, your iPhone decides how often to check to see if there's new mail. Push mail has always been a huge battery drainer. The proof, when you turn on low power mode, push mail is one of those things that gets turned off. So we're gonna turn off push mail at the top of the screen. And then underneath Fetch, choose your Fetch interval, how often you want your mail to be fetched. I like every 30 minutes. And it'll fetch whenever you open the mail app. So you're not gonna see a difference. Let's talk about another new iOS 16 setting that even Apple admits can drain your iPhone's battery life. Tap back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap on sounds and haptics, scroll down and then tap on keyboard feedback. David was so excited about this until Apple put out the support article the other day that says turning on keyboard haptics may affect the battery life of your iPhone. Sad. That was a nice few days. I really do like keyboard feedback. This is another one of those settings I'm probably going to leave on just for the user experience, but it is a battery drainer. If you want to turn it off, go ahead. The next setting is not only a good battery tip, it's a good life tip. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen back to the main page of settings. One below sounds and haptics is focus tap on that. I love do not disturb and it's one of the reasons why I get great battery life. During the day, my iPhone isn't waking up with all sorts of notifications. Yes, I'm less disturbed, but the real point is that I'm using my phone less often. Yeah. Unfortunately, one of the biggest iPhone battery drainers is actually using your iPhone. I always have plenty of battery left in the evening. After almost two years of use, my trusty old iPhone 12 Pro still has 88% battery health. You can tap on a focus to let certain people and apps send you notifications through that focus. And with iOS 16, you can link a focus to your lock screen. Let's talk about lock screens and battery life. We love the new iOS 16 lock screen customization features that Apple built in. We've made a whole video about how to customize your iPhone lock screen, but we're kind of concerned that it could, over time, drain your iPhone's battery life. And it depends on how many widgets you have and what they're doing. So if you've got widgets that are checking your location all the time, that's gonna drain more battery than the clock widget, for instance. If you notice increased battery drain when you add a new widget or a new wallpaper to your iPhone, try reverting to something more basic, but this might be another one of those trade-offs where you say, I want the, the cool lock screen user experience and I'll risk a little bit of battery life to do it. That's me. The verdict is in iOS 16 lock screens are really cool. Speaking of keeping your iPhone cool, what's your next tip? How's that for a link? Our next tip is to keep your iPhone cool. iPhones have a standard operating temperature of 32 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you start to go outside of that range, your battery can be impacted. Cold weather, it'll just shut down your iPhone, won't have any long-term negative effects, but hot weather can have a lot of negative effects on your iPhone's We're battery. We're talking permanent damage here, people. Don't leave your iPhone in a hot car. We recommend keeping it cool, cool like our channel members. There's that link again. You can join our membership program, get access to a whole bunch of cool perks like new PDFs with our settings to turn on and turn off for iOS 16. You could just watch those videos though. You could watch those videos next. And become a member. But not before we tell you about this next battery tip. It's restarting your iPhone about once a week. This could resolve minor software issues that just crop up in the background. It's good iPhone hygiene, people. Once a week, turn it off. Turn it on again. Settings to turn off. Settings and turn to turn on. on. 
Heather's that like again. Watch one of those videos next. They are appearing on the screen. Check them out. It is a cool feature, though. Sort of. It's I think it's, it's, cool. it's useful. It's really not that impressive. They're always on display. Well, it's the first iteration. It's, a, it's bad. It's not bad. I'm disappointed. I, I'd like it to be more functional. I think it's 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 too uh, it's too fancy. It's too fancy. It's too close to the actual just wallpaper. Yeah. It's like it's like in between always on display and it's a regular iPhone wallpaper almost. It's like they took a middle approach to it. Right, and that's that's I totally agree. That's the problem. Yep. They should pick one. Pick one. Pick a side. Pick a side. Egalitarian, uh, functional, Spartan. Hop I, off the fence. I I vote Spartan. Okay, I don't know what that means.